A pop star of the 80s, uh, Gary Newman, is back. In fact, he's never been away. He's been keeping a, a low profile. But he's here with us today, and he's just released uh, a new single. It's called Like a Refugee, and here's a clip from the video. Treated like a refugee Never seems to be in place for me In my mind there is a scene I see My house is burning No one returning to the land Gary Newman and uh, his new single, Like a Refugee. Where was that shot, by the way, Gary? A place called Bergamo in Italy. Oh, right. We were trying to work it out before whether it was a set or... No, it's an amazing it. place, actually. You see it. I see you're looking remarkably well. Am I? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. What have you been doing the past couple of years? Because you had quite a low profile, really. Was that self-imposed or what? Um, well, a bit, bit of both, really. It's, um, I, I do think if you try to be in a public eye all the time, then people get tired of you if they don't get tired of you anyway, you know, which is difficult to avoid that. So I do try to keep away from things unless I've got something you know, serious going on. But it's amazing, isn't it, because the two-way army, the people who are into Gary Newman, are incredibly loyal. I mean, they're still there, aren't they? I was aware of you, what, late 70s? 79, yes. 79, and those people are still supporting you. Why have they maintained that support? What is it about you that attracts them and keeps them? It's very hard for me to say. I, I've, I've always done um, very massive stage shows, for mm. example, and, and yet my, my tickets have always been about the cheapest around, mm. uh, which is a... a you well, know, you're not doing a Barbra Streisand, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> 260 quid a ticket. That's a bit much, ticket. isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's disgusting, isn't it? It is disgusting. It is. It's a rip-off. <laughs> my opinion. But oh, yeah, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> Wish I could get away with 250 <laughs> quid. But I don't, it's a way of you know, going out on tour and so on. That's a way of saying thank you for what that they've given me in other ways, mm. the record sales and so on. I don't know, it might be that. It, you know, the records have... I've never done anything radically different from one to the other, but they've meandered and changed with the times as, as the times have gone by, so that might have something to do with it. I, I don't really know. But I think... I mean, you've had a difficult time, there's no doubt about it, because radio has never been very keen to pick up on a, a mm. Gary Newman single. And that's probably made even worse now by the playlist situation. You know, yes, the yes. public wants what the public gets. And if this... Like a refugee is not being played. They don't know it exists, do they? That's a problem, yeah. yeah. So how do you combat that? It's very difficult to do that. If you're not on main time on mainstream radio, then you will never compete um, seriously. Mm. The best that you can do is to do as much regional radio touring as possible, just as much as you can of 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 the the other things, the lesser things really, to try to make up the difference. But you will always suffer, and the majority of people will probably never know you've got a record out, and and that's very difficult to live with. And I've to be honest, I've been struggling now with that for, for many years and, and still do struggle very much. But it seems so unfair, I mean, you know, to me and I'm sure to loads of uh, other yeah, people, no matter who it is. There's so many people want to be pop stars that it's more than enough, mm. you know, to fill the, the, the slots that there are on the, on the road stations and so on. So it's, you know, there's nobody to blame. If, if your face fits or if the sound fits, then they'll play you and if it doesn't, they won't. My, my particular kind, I didn't write this song, so I can't claim anything for this one, but my own stuff. Um, it, it doesn't always sit comfortably beside what's in the charts. So I can mm. understand at times why they haven't wanted to play it. On the other hand, if you're getting into the lower 30s and 40s and so on, then somebody's buying it, and maybe they should reflect that. Mm. But I, don't, you know, I don't, really don't want to sort of keep going on about it, because I've, I've had it for 10 years now. Yes, exactly. So. exactly. <laughs> um, your family, you're very, very close, and you all sort of work together, really, don't you, as well? Yeah, my dad's my manager. Mum runs a fan club. That might be another reason for it, I suppose, with the fans being loyal, that there's only ever been one person between me and them, and that's family yeah. anyway. So it's a very close relationship between us all. And what about the flying? Are you still flying? Yeah, yeah, more than ever. Yeah? Too much, my dad says. <laughs> <laughs> what but got yeah. you into that in the first place? Was it hanging around Heathrow and stuff like that? I always lived near there, so that might have something to do with it. I really don't know. It, it started when I was about four years old, I suppose. My dad would take me to air shows, and it just grew. I, I, I loved things mechanical, things that go quick. Yeah. Um, powerful machinery, really. I'm very at home with that, much more so than I am with people. I feel comfortable around it. And aeroplanes are the ultimate machines. Uh, and I think it was just inevitable that I would get involved with it. I've been a display pilot now for 10 years. Wow. So it's, um, it, it really is almost like a second career, you know. Well, I tell you, it's been good seeing you. Thank you. You take care, and as I say, you look remarkably well. It's fantastic. <laughs> and Thank uh, you. good luck with the new single, Like a Refugee. And uh, let's hope we hear it on network radio as uh, well as regional yeah, radio. And will you be touring soon? 
October, November time, yes. Okay, we look forward to that. Uh, 